What's going on everybody? This episode we're going to take the knowledge from the previous two videos and we're going to start building a new web page. Now over the next couple of episodes we're going to be doing this. So it's probably not going to be like perfectly clear we're going to do this in episode one, this in episode two, episode three, but I'm going to try to keep it organized so that we have some logical concepts split up across those videos. So this episode our goal is to use use effect with fetching data from an API. So we're going to do this to get the definition for a word. In the next episode, I want to talk about how we can create individual pages or parameterized pages so that we can basically create a page and then just change the information that shows up on that page and the change the actual word that we're searching by changing the data passed into the URL. So it's going to be pretty ugly until we get to the styling but you already have to see me in each one of these videos, so it's not gonna be anything you're not used to. And with that, let's get started. So we are going to start with a commit message, basic use effect practice. So that is the commit message. If you want to jump into this section, here is the repo URL. So I envision that this dictionary page is going to kind of be like a landing page for our dictionary functionality. So I'm going to keep all of this functionality here for now, and I'm actually going to create a new component. Uh, so actually, this dictionary should be in the pages, actually. So we're going to move that there. Yes, update imports. So the dictionary is going to be the page and then we're going to have, yeah, I'm gonna make another page. So this is going to be for a definition.js. And I'm using the separation between components and pages kind of lightly, like don't overthink it. A page is really just a component, but it kind of gives an idea of how it's supposed to be used. So the definition is kind of going to be its own component versus a component that's embedded in other pages. All right, so we'll just go off of that. So we'll say export default function definition, and then we'll just return something like here is a definition. Let's go ahead and import use effect from React. All righty. Now let's go ahead and define a call to use effect here pass in the first argument, which is a function, and I'm going to have this execute just once, so we're going to leave it as an empty dependency array. And we will just say something like page loaded, and we'll console log this. So obviously, we don't just wanna put a string here. Now over in app.js, we have the import for the dictionary updated. I'm going to add a new route. So route path is going to be slash definition. The end goal here is to parameterize this so we can have some information after this of the word that we want to define. For now, we're just going to just go with definition and we'll fix that here shortly. But we have a few other things we have to build up to that. So let's be patient. Definition. Beautiful, beautiful. And then from our website, you could make a link to it, but I'm going to ultimately get to that page from this dictionary page. So for now, we'll just go to slash definition. Here is our definition. And we also see the page loaded showing up in the console. So our use effect is working. Now what we can do is we can go to definition, close others, and this is what we're going to be working on for a little bit. So let's create a state variable. So we'll say import use state and use effect and we'll define the state first thing so const and this is going to be the word that we want to define and then set word and this may actually end up being an object full of a bunch of stuff such as the word the definition synonyms whatever else it might be so we'll just say use state and We'll just leave it undefined right now unless we need to change that later. So we are going to be using a free API on the internet that doesn't require an API key. And this is an important note. So oftentimes for a really good API, you'll need a key. And this will basically be your identity. It'll prove that you have access to use this API. An example may be this words API on Rapid API. You can use this for free up to a certain number of requests per day. 
And it's a great way to get definitions. So you can go in here and grab words and then go into like the word. And here is an example response. So the word example, and they have some more definitions down here. The problem with this is that requiring a key makes your front end application insecure. You don't wanna give that key out because then people can use the API as you, ultimately costing you money. So the solution to this is to use the API key on the back end of an application and then connect to the back end. That way the key is secure. But that's kind of a problem because I'm not really to the point of building a back end if I was gonna go through that process, I might just build my own API and maybe we'll do that upcoming soon. So for now, instead what I wanna do is I want to use an API that doesn't require a key. In this situation, we could use it safely from a front end application because anybody can use that same URL without a key. So there's no risk of giving out anything private. I don't know if there is a good way to secure a key on a front end application. So an alternative is this free dictionary API at dictionaryapi.dev. And I was testing it out, it seems pretty good. So you can copy this link and then paste any word in here, such as mechanic. And the definition is someone who builds or repairs machinery and so forth. Because all we have to do is access the endpoint. We don't need a key. It's much easier to use and we can check all of our code into source control without any concerns of keys getting out there or keys getting exposed through the browser. So let's talk about how we can make a request to this API using fetch. Fetch is one way of making requests inside of React and there are a few others out there but we're going to go with fetch. We may look at some of the others later. So here is some information on using the fetch API if you want to take a quick read. It's going to follow this pattern. So fetch and then two thens. So we'll copy this and put this in our code. We will get rid of the console log and paste this here. Now all we have to do is change this URL to whatever API endpoint we want to use. So going back to the free dictionary API, you'll want to go to dictionaryapi.dev and we'll just go with this link here so we can copy that and paste that here. Now, hello is the word we're going to be defining. We'll save and let's just check what shows up in the console log. We'll head over to our site and you can see we do get a response here and it's quite some nesting. So we have an array, so index zero and then inside of the property meanings, we have another array of three, so zero, one, two inside and that's for the different part of speeches, so noun, verb, or interjection. So you could grab one of those or all three. You just have to decide what data you want from this. So we'll go into one of these. Then we have another array of definitions. And then the zero index here has the property definition. So basically we're going to start with an array and we're going to traverse this structure to grab the data we need. So that might be a little frightening if you've never done this before, but it's really not that bad. You just have to go one layer at a time until you get what you want. For example, we could go into data and it was an array. So we will grab the item with the index zero, save. And now what is printed is one layer deeper. So we're no longer in an array, we're in an object. Now we do the same thing for meanings. So we will say dot meanings, save. Taking a look now at the data again, we're in another array, and now we can choose another index, so let's just go with zero, index zero, and so forth. So that is how you will traverse through the structure to grab the element that you want. Now you may want multiple elements, very likely, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take all three of these parts of speech so we can just have all of those on the page. So I'm going to back up I don't want to grab the item with the zero index there and just grab the whole array instead. And this, this is what we're going to put in state. So not only will we console log, but we're also going to do something else. And you could just replace the console log if you want. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to surround this in curly braces and this will allow us to do multiple things. So where do I want that curly brace? We want it after the console log, so right here. And then we will space this out a bit, like so. So it should look something like this. And now you can put 
other lines of code here to run in addition to the console log. If you're only executing one thing, you can drop those curly braces and just put it how it was, but instead of console log, do something else. But we're actually going to assign this to set word, and we want data zero dot meanings. We'll save, and we can now use this word variable, the state variable, down here in our print. So let's go ahead and change this up a bit. We will make this an H1. It could be plural, singular, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it. And I'm also going to do the multi-line thing here. So I'm going to make a fragment and then close it off with a fragment as well. So it'll look like this. And I'm gonna get rid of that semicolon since the return is now closed down here. Now we can iterate through all of those meanings displaying them on the page. So that's going to be a very similar structure to what we did with employee, where we did employees.map, and then each employee gets assigned to this parameter here. We're gonna do the same thing, but for definitions. So if you wanna try it out, give it a go. But it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna have curly braces, word.map, and this will take a function as an argument. So I'll make an arrow function here. The parameter will be the meaning, and then the curly braces is what we want to do. So we will say paragraph, and we'll pause here, so we'll save, and let's take a look real quick. Oh, and I will want to return. Let's take a look real quick at the console. So this is what we want to grab. We want to grab the first iteration, it'll be this one. So definitions, then is index zero, and then definition. So let's try that. It will be meaning dot definitions index zero dot definition, lowercase d. All right, let's try that and take a look. We get some information on the page. So that is how you can define words. Let's try a different word. Let's go with helicopter. Check out the page. It's an aircraft or to transport by helicopter. So this would be the verb version. So you would helicopter somebody and what we can do is we can put that here. So meaning dot definitions of zero dot. And let's take a look at the structure real quick. Part of speech is what we are looking for. The dot part of speech. And then you can put a colon here. So we'll save that. And uh, it's not quite what I wanted. Um, would the colon work there? Yeah, I think this is right. Just not getting quite what we want here. So it's actually not defined inside of that array there. So I just need to remove that array. It's really easy to get lost when you're doing this, trying to traverse through a complicated structure. I do it all the time. So I always end up just changing things until it works. <laughs> so there we go. We got a noun and verb. Let's just clean up the formatting just a bit there. Save. Looks a little bit better. Maybe a space after. It's removing my space. It's, we can just do a plus a space there. That should work. Noun and a verb. So that is how you display data from an API. Last thing, I wanna make sure we get rid of this warning here. We wanna make sure each list item has a unique key. So we will just use a unique identifier as we have done earlier in this series. So using the UUID NPM package, here is an example you can find. So import v4 as UUID v4 from UUID. We will paste that at the top of our page. Scrolling back down, we will just say inside of the paragraph, key is equal to UUID v4. And now we should be able to refresh our page without, oh my golly. So this is actually a different problem. It's probably good we ran into this. You see, we are trying to display all this data but maybe our API request is not yet finished and we're trying to you know, traverse into it and that's just not gonna work out well. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a ternary. So if word is defined, we're going to do all this. Otherwise, we will just return null. Now we save and the page looks a lot better. It's working. We're not getting any errors on display. And if it's going really slow, it'll just be blank for a moment before the text shows up. So you could try putting something like paragraph loading. However, it may cause some flashing of words, 
like it'll just be there for like a fraction of a second in our case so it depends on what you want if you want that to be there or not I don't really like it I think it's just kind of like oh what was that I didn't get to read that so I'm just going to return null and we still got this UUID here working so everything seems to be good that is the general structure for requesting data from an API and displaying it on the web page after the data has been loaded. Up next, we're going to talk about how we can modify this page so that we can search any word and not just a hard-coded value defined in the URL here. Wouldn't it be cool if we could actually just paste it in right here? So I could go in and type cucumber, for example, and it would look up the word cucumber. Well, right now it just shows a blank page. That's because the request fails and never does return good data. And this evaluates to false. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next video, which is going to be about URLs and parameterization. Stay tuned and thank you for sticking with this video series so far. Hopefully it has been really helpful and at a good pace to pick up this stuff. I've been trying to show my common mistakes and not be like 100% perfect. So I hope that's not too distracting and rather helpful, but definitely let me know in the comment section if you like the way this series is going. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.